What is the one thing common between Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos, Bernard Aukno, Larry Page and Mukesh Ambani? They are all engineers, they are CEOs of some of the world's biggest tech companies, and they all have net worths over $90 billion. Okay, that's three things, but let me tell you, this is not a coincidence. Five out of top 10 richest people in the world happen to have studied engineering and computer science. So let's take a look into why so many billionaire CEOs happen to be engineers. What's up everybody? Sadia Khap here. I'm an electrical engineer doing PhD in machine learning. And on this channel, we usually talk about all things engineering, machine learning, scholarships. So glad to see you here. I hope you'll stick around and we'll see each other again. Do you follow Elon Musk on Twitter? Well, 94 million people do, so I'm guessing you do. Did you happen to see this tweet? Where he said managers in a technical area must be technically sound. And then he basically compared all those MBA folks to a cavalry captain who can't ride a horse. But it's not just tech that engineers are absolutely dominating. Do you know this man? He happens to be the world's third richest person. Yep, after Musk and Bezos, this is the world's third richest person. So his net worth surpasses both Bill Gates and Warren Buffett. According to Forbes, he has over $158 billion net worth in 2022. And he is one of the only two rich people on world's top 10 rich people list who did not make his money off the back of a tech conglomerate. It's just him and Warren Buffett. Everybody else made their money through tech companies. His name is Bhagna Aghno and he's a French gentleman. So he made his money the way every French businessman does, by making luxury goods. You may not have heard of him, but you've definitely heard of Louis Vuitton Dior, Tiffany, and Sephora. And guess what? He owns all of them and more. Here's another thing you probably did not know about him. He studied engineering at Ecole Polytechnique in Paris. So what makes engineers so effective as billionaire CEOs, even when they are not directly working in tech companies? Well, it boils down to three things. The first one being problem solving. The word engineering is synonymous with problem solving. As engineers, we are taught to think like engineers and part of that process is problem solving. We solve problems. And as great CEOs, I'm sure every great CEO has to solve a lot of problems to get to where they are in life. So when you think like an engineer, you develop a mindset that makes you very smart when it comes to problem solving. It's not exaggeration, it's not showing off, it's just a mindset. Because you develop this analytical thinking, you develop a keen eye for spotting different problems, for debugging different issues, for proposing different solutions, seeing what works and what doesn't, learning from that experience, and then trying something that works. Eventually you reach a point where you have gotten rid of all the bugs in your system, in your code, in your process and in your business and you have taken it to a point where it just works. For the first time, SpaceX has successfully landed its Falcon 9 rocket on a drone ship in the Atlantic Ocean. And the second thing that makes engineers such effective CEOs is innovative thinking. Let's take the example of Satya Nadella who was an engineer at Microsoft and eventually made his way to CEO in 2014. Before him, the previous CEO was Steve Ballmer, who studied mathematics and business, and Microsoft was doing okay under his leadership, but Microsoft was facing a lot of competition from Apple. Apple was the tech leader at the time with their innovative design, innovative thinking, and they were bringing products like iPhone and iPad in the market, whereas Microsoft was somewhat stale and lagging behind. And in response to iPhone and iPad, they tried to make Windows Phone. We all remember how that went. 
and then they made Surface which is questionable. It didn't do as well as iPads have done in the world. But when Satya took over the company, he completely revolutionized the thinking, the mindset of the company. Instead of keeping it a closed-minded, closed-loop company and trying to bring everybody to work inside this Microsoft atmosphere, Microsoft ecosystem in response to the Apple ecosystem, he opened things up. He expanded products like Microsoft Office, Word, PowerPoint, Excel, all those Office Suite applications to Apple devices. He also innovated rather than imitate Apple. He stopped trying to make Microsoft the next Apple and trying to make Windows Phone or trying to make something in response to the iPad or the MacBook. Instead, he focused more on Azure which is Microsoft's cloud services provider, and it became the biggest competitor of Amazon Web Services. It was his innovative thinking and vision that brought Microsoft back and enabled it to stand on its feet. And the third thing that makes engineers very effective CEOs is perseverance. How to pronounce it? Perse persevere in the face of something? Per perseverance? Perseverance? I don't know how to pronounce it, but you get the idea. Engineers pay very close attention to these minor details in their codes. They debug stuff. They are somewhat stubborn. You, you all know the examples of CEOs like Elon Musk, how he pays such close attention to everything that's happening in the company, how he stays in the company for all-nighters and how he is personally involved in the product development, be it the rockets, be it the Neuralink, be it the Tesla cars, anything. He gets involved, gets his hands dirty, sees the technical specs and the code himself. A lot of you may not know, but he has actually, he's, he's a brilliant coder. He has actually written one of the libraries for GPT-2, OpenAI's GPT-2 libraries. So he himself gets involved in the coding process, in the technical and scientific and the minor details of the process. And he becomes, he pays close attention to the details and becomes stubborn when he needs to be and makes everybody work until the solution is found. And this is something engineers develop as a habit. When we have this way of thinking like an engineer, we are very trained to debug our codes. We are trained to keep looking at things again and again with fresh perspectives, with new eyes, set of new eyes, and keep looking at it from different angles, keep trying different solutions until something works. And here's where I cheated a little bit. Technically, Elon Musk does not have a degree in engineering. He studied physics and economics, but he's a better engineer than most other engineers out there. Engineering is a way of life. It's not a piece of paper. It's not a degree. It's a way of thinking. And that's what matters. To think like an engineer and to be a programmer, you don't necessarily need a degree to prove your skills. If this video has inspired you to become an engineer or to start thinking like an engineer and programmer, then you don't want to miss this series in which I teach Python to students and in the first video of the series I actually explain how to think like an engineer, how to think like a programmer. So if you are an engineer or if you're someone who is interested in becoming an engineer or a programmer then you don't want to miss this series out. See you next time.